Up to this point, we've learned quite a lot about SOLIDWORKS, and I hope you've enjoyed this series and you've learned a lot along the way. This is a basic series meant to give you sort of a kickstart into learning SOLIDWORKS and getting comfortable with the software. Now we've covered everything in broad topics. When we talked about sketching, we've talked about basic features, molded parts, complex surface parts, and so on. But there are a few more things that I wanna talk about that didn't really fit into every area. Now the first video here, additional tips, we're gonna talk about some sketching tips, some different things that I didn't get to cover. And we're not gonna cover in detail here, but I really want you to know that there's some more in there that we didn't talk about. So the first thing I wanna do is from the tools menu, I would just want you to know that there is a sketch tools and sketch settings section. Now inside here under sketch tools there are a few things that I just wanna point out. Now we're not gonna talk about everything in here, but there are just a few things that don't really fall into anywhere, but I just wanna mention them because they could come in handy depending on what you're designing. Now these are things that if you need to use them or you wanna play around with them that you should go into the help file search for them, and just play around with them, see if they fall in line with the types of things that you design. Jog line is something that doesn't really get talked about or doesn't really get used a lot. Now, depending on the products you're designing, if you need to add little cutouts or notches into your sections of sketches, jog line can be a handy tool. I almost never use it, but it does come in handy in some cases. So if you design a specific product that needs that, then definitely look into the jog line tool, see if it can help you out. Make path is something that really falls in line with creating blocks. It allows you to take multiple sketch entities, as long as they have tangency across them, arcs and straight lines together, and put them all in together as a path. Now, when you're talking about sketch blocks, it can be handy because then you can simulate things like cam and follower motion. Now, when you're dealing with applying things like relations between sketches, you can have a tangency between a line and an arc. As soon as the line gets to the end of that arc, that relationship basically comes to a halt. It puts the brakes on. But when you make a continuous path out of multiple entities, like two arcs and two straight lines, that tangency can then flow along it because you can sort of put everything together in one. So very handy tool, especially if you're doing things like making cams and followers and so on. Replace entity doesn't ever get talked about, but it will allow you to do things like take an entity and replace it. Like the icon here shows an arc replacing a straight line. In most cases, when I do that sort of thing, I will take the original line and make it construction and simply add the other entity to it. But in some cases, you don't want that information there. You want to keep all the original references and just transfer them to something else. So take a look at replace entity. If you run into issues where you start your sketches and you decide that you need to move things around and change things. Coming down a little bit more, a couple other things I wanna talk about. Repair sketch. Repair sketch is a very handy tool, especially if you're having problems. Oftentimes when you try to exit a sketch that's already been used for a feature. So if you've made a sketch, made a feature, go back and edit the sketch and it tells you that there's a problem. Repair sketch can be very handy to help you find that problem. It can zoom in and find things like small gaps, extra sketch entities and so on. And we'll take a quick look at that as well. The next thing I wanna talk about is check sketch for feature. And to really talk about that, I wanna go ahead and just draw something. So I'm just gonna draw a simple rectangle, make sure that I have a straight line somewhere. And we'll go ahead, we'll go back up to tools, back to sketch tools, and we'll say check for feature. Now this is pretty cool because you can take the sketch you're currently in and you can check it for a very specific feature. For instance, you can go all the way down here and say, hey, is this gonna work for a surface fill? Is this gonna work for a rib feature or for a loft section or so on? Let's go ahead and just say a base revolve and check it. it. Tells us that no problems are found, one closed contour, no open contours. If instead we add, let's say a small line segment off the end of this, we go back into sketch tools, check for feature, check for the exact same thing, now it comes up with an error. It tells me that it cannot be used because, and you notice that it highlighted that little section, there is uh, multiple entities sharing an endpoint. Now if we say okay, it automatically goes into that repair sketch. You'll notice that it zooms in using the magnifying glass. We can zoom in and out. And it tells us that this is the error. This is where the problem is. So we really need to get rid of this. We can delete it and close this out. And now it's all good to go. Now that magnifying glass is actually a very handy tool as well. G on the keyboard by default brings it up. It allows you to zoom in closer in certain areas. 
Oftentimes it's used in the modeling window rather than the sketching environment to zoom in and make a selection for things like applying mates or selecting a reference point. One other thing I really want to talk about in sketching is quick snaps. Now, if we go into the document properties, go over to our grid snap section, there is a system snaps. It's on the system options called system snaps. And by default, most everything is selected. Now I don't display a grid and I only snap to the grid when it's displayed. But other than that, everything else is selected. For instance, quadrant points on circles. Let's go ahead and turn quadrant points off, say OK, and let's draw a circle. Now with that turned off, if I try to sketch a line, there are no quadrant points that it's snapping to. Now, a lot of people like to turn those snap points off. Then you can use quick snaps and you can turn some of them on. For instance, now if I sketch a line, I can quick snap to certain areas and make use of them. So again, by default, system relation snaps, most of the time it makes sense to have all of those turned on. But again, some people don't like all of those turned on and you can use this sort of quick snaps option to grab things like midpoints, intersection snaps, near snaps, and so on. It can be a handy tool. Like I said, I leave everything turned on, but not everybody models in the same way. The very last thing I want to mention, because when you start creating things in 3D and SOLIDWORKS in any CAD system, it can be hard to come up with something to model. And most of the time you start by trying to reverse engineer or replicate something you see. In that case, you want to go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and Sketch Picture. And that'll allow you to insert a picture into your sketch, places it in the sketch, and then you can, of course, hide the sketch or show it. But then you have a picture that allows you to really view it and really take a look at it. And that's what I use to do things like reverse engineer cars, or if there's a product that I need to use as a starting point, oftentimes I'll place that sketch picture in there and start to use it as the base. Now, if you want more information about that, the series I did on surfacing where we recreated a Ferrari steering wheel definitely made use of that. We used sketch pictures as the base so we knew exactly where things had to go and we built from there. But again, that's usually what happens when you start learning. You want to replicate something and sketch picture can be very handy because oftentimes seeing it in your hand or on the desk and then trying to replicate it on the screen, it can be a pretty hard process especially things that are harder to measure, like complex shapes like speakers or computer mice or things like that. So definitely play around with those options. And there are a lot more things that I didn't talk about under tools and sketch tools. And there's even some sketch settings in there that you can play around with. But don't get stuck using just the handful of standard tools that I showed you. Make sure that you expand and play around and figure out what's out there and what can help you model the things that you want to model.